It's now the middle of March and we're driving onto the farm of Michael Mellet and Shrew in County Mayo. Over the past five years, Michael has significantly improved his animal performance and ultimately his bottom line by getting cattle out to grass early. However, before we go and talk to Michael, we're going to look at some of the key aspects of grassland management. One of the reasons we produce beef is to make profit, is to make money. You want to make money out of the job. One of the key areas of making profit out of beef production is grassland management. It costs around two euros a kilo to produce a kilo of live weight gain from meal indoors compared to 20 to 25 cent a kilo to produce a kilo of live weight gain from grass. Therefore, it's quite simple. The more live weight gain you can get on the animal from grass as opposed to meal and silage indoors, the higher your profit. In order to achieve a satisfactory level of gain at grass, it is important that you get your winter feeding regime right. You want animals going back to grass fit, but not fat. For cattle that are going back to grass, meals should be front loaded, with meal feeding ceasing six to eight weeks prior to turnout. To achieve your target of 0.3 to 0.4 kilos of live weight gain per day whilst indoors, Wheelands and stores should be fed 1 to 2 kgs of meal per day, depending on silage quality. I suppose, Michael, if we start back to the start, when, when would these cattle have been housed? They were housed the last week of October, the first week of November. All the cattle are housed by the first week of November. And when they did come in, Michael, what were you feeding them? They, when they came in, first they were put on 2 kgs of meal plus silage and for about 60 days and from roughly mid-January on they were silage only from then on. So you really feed no meal for the last 68 six, weeks no, before going no back meal, to grass? No meal for 68 weeks going back to grass. And in yeah. terms of the ration that you were feeding Michael, what was the protein content? The protein was 12% protein. Right. And, and your silage quality was, it, was it fairly good? It would be 70 DMD. So you had, you had good quality silage? Good, fairly good quality silage. And your, your key goal there Michael is to have them growy as opposed to fat? Or, yeah, just yeah. to grow them, grow them, yeah, not grow them too much out. condition. And they're taken off, from about mid-January they're taking off meal and they're on all silage only for the rest of the time. They're so they're on silage basically from around 6 to 8 weeks? 6 to 8 weeks yeah. before they go to grass, yeah. yeah. So, given turn out the green light, when do you know to let stock out? I can never understand a lot of youth farmers. The big problem I have is getting you to house stock, and then when you get them housed, it's letting them back out. It does take a lot of courage to let cattle out the grass in, in early March, but when you have the facts and you have the information, a lot of the risk can be taken out of it. There's two things you need to know before letting cattle out the grass. Firstly, how much grass you have in the farm, and secondly, how much grass you're going to require. Firstly, we're going to deal with identifying how much grass you've actually got in the farm. And while a lot of people shy away from that, that's a simple, very simple process. It's just a matter of getting out there, walking the land, and looking at, trying to identify the average height of the sward in each field. And basically, that can either be done using a device like this, which is a grass plate meter, which basically simply measures the height of the grass in the farm, or alternatively, and to coin a phrase, this is one I made earlier. This is simply a brush shaft, an old brush shaft. It is notched up along with a saw and the, the measurements in centimetres are wrote along it here. And what you basically do is you walk across the field, you, you look at the height of how far the grass comes up. Now don't, don't take the tip of the grass, basically look for the bulk of the sward is, how far it comes up the brush. You, you walk the field, you take about 10 to 15 samples depending on the size of the field and you, you're basically trying to determine the average height of the grass. When you have the average height of the grass recorded, record in your notepad the field number, the area of the field, what size the field is, where it's one hectare, two hectares, and the average height of the grass. And then when you go back into the kitchen table, you can sit down and calculate how much grass is in that field and how long it's going to do your cattle for. It's important whenever you're taking your measurements that they're representative of the actual amount of grass in the field. So stay away from areas such as water troughs, gateways, along hedges. We've established in this field that the average grass height is around 10 centimetres, so that is recorded in our notepad. We then move on to the next field and subsequently the rest of the fields in the farm to build up a profile of the amount of grass in the total farm. So we've been around the farm here at Michael's farm now and we've identified that his average grass height is around 10 centimetres. Now from our chart we can see that 10 centimetres of grass equates to around 1,280 kgs of dry matter per the hectare. Don't worry about the figure dry matter. A lot of farmers get confused and, and switch off when you talk about dry matter. It's a figure. Don't worry about anything else. So basically what we've established is Michael has between 12 and 1,300, 1 1.3, 1 1.2 tons of grass per the hectare on his farm. Now, 
we have found out he's, he's 36 hectares for grazing, so simply what you do is you multiply your 1.2, 1.3 by 36, which gives you around 45 tonnes or 45,000 kilos of grass on the entire farm. You do exactly the same for your farm. Identify the grass height, use your chart to identify what that equates to per hectare, and then multiply it by the number of hectares that you have for grazing. You have to build in a utilisation figure, and that will change throughout the year. In good dry weather and lush grass, you, your utilisation figure will be around 80%. That means of that 45,000 uh, kilos available, 80% of it will be actually available for the cattle to con consume. But as we can tell, the weather here, and, and especially at early turnout with a lot of heavy rain in the evenings or in, in showers, utilisation figure will drop. So to be on the safe side at this time of year, I would take a utilisation figure of around 60%, especially when there's heavy showers forecasted. Basically what we're doing then, we multiply the 45,000 by 0 0.6 to actually tell us how much that's your 60%. Michael has basically 27 thousand kilos or 27 tons of grass available like when you're looking at grass simply work out the same it's a similar principle to feeding meal if you're feeding 10 kilos a day and you're feeding 100 cattle that's a ton a day 100 tons will do you 100 tons will do you 100 days it's exactly the same principles with grass so what we have worked out is michael has 27 tons now we need to go and work out how much he needs and how long that's going to how long that's going to last him it's using this form here basically you're looking at how much uh, grass each category of stock will require obviously a 400 kilo weaning isn't going to require as much grass as a 600 kilo a suckler cow with a young calf isn't going to require as much grass as a suckler cow with a with an older calf and what you're looking at here from a store animal point of view a 300 kilo store animal will require about six kgs of dry matter of grass per day a 400 kilo one will require eight a 500 kilo one will require 10 and a 600 kilo one will require 12. you're looking at as a rough rule of thumb two percent of the body weight so two percent of 600 kilos is 12. two percent of 400 kilos is eight and that's how you calculate it so you you divide your cattle into categories you put in the number you have you multiply it by how much each one requires per day and that gives you how much grass that each group's Group requires. If we use Michael, Michael's a very straightforward example. He has about 102 cattle going out to grass, averaging 600 kilos. So therefore, they're going to require 12 kilos of dry matter per day. So 600 kilos, 102, 102 cattle times 12. And if I just get my calculator, is Michael's daily grass requirement is about 100, is 1,224 kgs per day. So remember, we we worked out that he has 27,000 kilos. So the next simple step is 27,000, divide that by our daily requirement of 1, 2, 2, 4, and that gives us 22, uh, 22. Now what that 22 figure represents is the number of grazing days you have ahead. Now basically, when Michael grazes off one field, it'll be 22 days before he comes back and he requires it again. Now, ideally at this time of year, you'd be looking for 28 to 30 grazing days ahead because growth is slow, utilisation is very. So Michael just hasn't enough grass at the minute to turn out all the stock. When grass growth picks up in April, May and June, you'd be looking at around 12 to 14 grazing days ahead. And again, when it slows down, then again, September, September, October, you'd be looking back at going into your 20, 25 grazing days ahead. So it's important that you continuously monitor your grazing days. If you find that you're, you're starting to get, your, you're running below what you require, say in the month of May, you're only getting down to eight or nine grazing days ahead, well then you have to look at taking steps. Uh, sowing a bit more fertilizer, maybe offloading some stock, selling some stock, or rehousing maybe so, some, some of the dry cows or something. But it's continuously processes of monitoring how many grazing days you have ahead and, and in order to con control grass quality. If you see that you're going to, maybe in, in, the, in the month of May, you have 21 grazing days ahead and you only require 14. Well then, you take steps. You either close ground up or you hold back on fertilizer uh, or you try to move stock on that little bit quicker and go in with the topper. So we're going to go and talk to Michael now, tell him the information that we've got and see how, see how we can address it. Basically, you have about 102 cattle, Michael, going out to grass now, haven't you? Yes, that'll be a uh, On that figure, and you, you've, uh, on your average grass covers, you're looking at about 22 to 23 grazing days ahead. So really what that tells you is if you were let out all the cattle now, you'd have 23 grazing days. Look, in this weather and on whatnot, Ideally, you'd look about 28 to 30 grazing days. So I suppose, look, in the case, you're not going to put all the cattle out. You're not planning on putting all the cattle out in the one day anyway, are you? No, no, not. At the minute, there's just 30 out at the, at the minute. Oh, you have 30 out already? 30 out already on the 16th of March. Yeah. Uh, a bit later than norm, but what we'd expect, we'd normally expect to get them out around the 1st of March. But from here on in, hopefully we'll get them all out now in the next two weeks, have them all out by the first week in April. 
few simple tips on letting cattle out the grass. Firstly, remember the cattle are coming out of your slatted shed. The sheds are warm, they're in a confined area. You're putting them out into the field. They're obviously going to do an awful lot of tearing around. Basically, you don't want to be letting them out at night because if they get sweated up, then the cold night comes and you're running into problems with pneumonia. So getting them out the grass early in the morning allows them time to cool down during the day. Secondly, as Michael has done here, ideally letting them out in small groups. Letting a big bunch of cattle out into a field basically does a similar action to a four for a reversible plough. It basically does a lot of ploughing, a lot of damage to the sward. So smaller groups, they'll settle better. And as Michael's about to do, let them out into a small field just so they can't get too much running around. And Michael, were you always turning cattle out that early, or uh, I suppose as the farm, have, have you changed your system since decoupling? Uh, we've changed a fair bit, yeah. We would normally get cattle out around the middle of April in the slaughtering, September, October. But uh, over the last two or three years, we've been in the dates back all the time. Right. So, and slaughtering our cattle by the end of June. Right, and uh, Michael, what have you had to do? Is it, has it been a lot of work in doing that? Or have you had made many changes to the system? I suppose the biggest change is getting, just getting cattle in from mid-October into the 1st of November, get them in early. Yeah. And get our bit of nitrogen out a bit earlier in spring. Like. When did you sow your nitrogen this year, Michael? This year, the you? last days of January. Last day. How last much work uh, did you do? 25 units of uh, urea to the urea acre. Have you got a good response from that, have yeah. you? We have a good response, yeah. Very good this year now. Yeah, you've certainly good grass covers now. You've certainly good grass covers. And Michael, I suppose... Uh, uh, have you made any other changes? Have you changed your silage in terms of how you're harvesting the silage? Yeah, yeah normally we'd cut silage uh, before before this, and the, from mid-May to the 25th of May. But now we're grazing all our silage ground, and to be come, take closing up silage roughly the middle of April and cut around the first to the second week of June. But I suppose now, Michael, I suppose if we take a walk down the fields and we look at some of the grass and we see where we're going to go from there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Earlier when we were looking at this field we calculated that there's around 12 centimetres of grass in it. That's, that'll equate to around 1,600 kgs of dry matter for the hectare, but there's obviously not, there's not the full hectare in this field. What's no, actually? 0.4 of the hectare. Yeah, 0.4, so 0 0.4. 1,600 multiplied by 0.4. And I suppose to build in our utilisation factor, Michael, around 60. 60% of it, if I go this time of the year, yeah. 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 Uh, that would give you around 400 kgs available to the actual cattle. And how many is in the field? Five. Five. The field at the five minute, no, 600 yeah. kilos. So that would be 12 kilos of grass each that would require. So 12 times 5 is 60. And divide that by our initial figure of 400. You're basically looking at six to seven days grazing in this field, Michael, which I suppose would be correct. It wouldn't be so bad for would, the month of March. But you'd be glad, you'd be happy if you got seven days yeah, out of this. Yeah, if you got now, a week's so grass on, you'd be happy enough. Yeah. But certainly, Michael, you'd be expecting that cattle grazing that field to be certainly doing the 1.3, 1.4 1 kilos again anyway, be hoping, on that good quality grass. You'd be definitely hoping for it. Yeah, yeah hoping yeah. for it now. Just to sum up what we've looked at here today on, on, on Michael's farm, it's basically the importance of grassland management and ultimately the impact it will have on your bottom line profit. Go back to the key point, 20 cents a kilo to produce a kilo again of grass, 2 euros or even more in some farms to produce it out of the shed. Therefore the key thing is that you need to produce as much of the live weight gain cheaply at grass if you're going to be profitable. How you do that is you get out to grass early, how you get out to grass early, closing up early in October, getting your fertiliser out early and not being afraid to let the cattle out early. So, it's now the middle of June and thankfully the weather has improved since we were out in the Mellet Farm last March. Let's go and see how Michael has got on since we were last with him. Michael, how are things? Good bad, Justin. How are you doing? Yeah, are you ke you're keeping well? That's a bad chart. I suppose, Michael, if anything, if nothing else has improved, the weather has improved since improved. we were out with you last. It has improved a lot since you were here last, <laughs> that's for sure now. Uh, how have things, Michael, progressed since we were with you? Uh, I mean, pretty good now. As you know, when you were here last, the weather was very bad. But about a week after you being here, weather, weather conditions improved greatly and I uh, got all the cattle to grass by the 24th of March. Oh, yeah. and, and how have things been since then, and Michael? Since that, things have been very good. Grass, grass growth was very good and yeah. everything was worked out. Has, has performance been good, has it? Very good. We weighed uh, last week and they have averaged about 1.3 kilos again per day and since they went to grass. So since they went to grass 1.3? Yeah, 1.3 a day. And was that totally from grass, Michael, or were you feeding? No, I would have started feeding meal early, early May. Right. So I would keep, keep, 
get rid of cattle in June. Oh, so you've cattle slaughtered already, I have, have you? Just one load gone last week. Oh, very and good. How did they, how did they do? Did they're they doing live? pretty good. I was pretty happy with them now. They're doing fairly well, yeah. In terms of performance, Michael, did they, did they, had, they, had they done well since they were bought in? They have done well. Since I bought them in, they would average about 0.8, 0.8 of a kilo a day. So, so that's, I bought that's over, really, they would have been bought July time? Bought July and killed, yeah. So, so. Oh, that's very good. They, they, did, they, did, they, did they leave money, Michael, I suppose? They left a few bob, yes, they did. So bad. That's the so main thing. Michael spoke about meal feeding at grass. However, in order to get the benefits of meal feeding at grass, it's important that you stick by the rules. What are the key benefits? The key benefits of meal feeding are, one, improved grading in them borderline cases, two, improved kill-out percentage, which could add an extra 20 to 30 euros onto your bottom line, and finally, getting cattle slaughtered earlier. We all know what happens is more cattle come in stream mid-summer, prices go down. By feeding that little bit of meal, you can market your cattle two to three weeks earlier and hopefully achieve a better price. So, now for the rules. The rules are basically quite simple. One, you want to make sure you're feeding the right type of meal. And basically, as you can see by these cattle behind me, they haven't really an awful lot more growing to do, so all you're looking to do is flesh them. So you're looking for energy. Really, one of the best products for fleshing cattle is rolled barley. However, there may be a slight palatability issue when feeding, when feeding rolled barley on its own on, grass like, on good quality grass like this. So how you overcome this is basically add a bit of citrus, a bit of distillers or a bit of molasses in along with the barley. Alternatively you can do what Michael decided to do here and that's basically feed the same ration as he fed over the to the cattle over the winter. A barley, citrus and distillers mix. Again, when cattle are in good quality grass like these and you're only feeding meal for the last 6 to 8 weeks, there's no ne real need to feed minerals in the ration, saving you 10 to 12 euro per tonne. The next point is to ensure you start feeding meal at the right time. It's an absolute waste of money starting to feed meal to cattle in May that aren't going to be fit for slaughter until September. You want to batch your cattle accordingly. Cattle that are going to be fit for slaughter in June, cattle that will be fit for slaughter in July, and cattle that will be fit for slaughter in the autumn. And you start meal feeding them cattle six to eight weeks before they come fit for slaughter. In terms of how much meal to feed, on good quality grass like this in, in, in May and June, really two kilos to three kilos is adequate. However, later on into the autumn when grass quality and availability starts to decline, you, want to, you might want to increase this to four to five kilos. Again, it will depend on the quality of your grass and the type of cattle that you're feeding.